Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV um, to the second part of our half season review of the Electricity League Premier Division. We looked at the top half of the table in the last video, so in this one we're going to look at the bottom half. And we're going to start with Bohemians, who have had an up and down season so far. Quite a quite an okay start to proceedings, and then Dinny Corcoran got injured and they kind of spiralled off for a long period of the season and kind of come back into it a little bit recently. Yeah, I think we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago about the the lack of cover, especially up front for Bowles. And when Dinny got injured, you were kind of relying on young lads like Kaleem Simon, who we don't know personally, obviously. And yeah. While like he's made a, a decent name for himself in the SSA Tricy League as as a young lad, and that he's he's not strong enough probably to play every week. Um, and like yeah, as you, you look across the, the the division and teams that are down there, the likes to the Parps as well, all have big strong lads playing centre half, and someone like Kaleem who has um, unsurmountable um, potential in terms of technical ability, he's not the strong, well. he's not the strongest. Yeah, he's not, and they kind of, I think Akinade being out injured obviously hasn't helped either, that if they had had Akinade and Kaleem um, with Dinia, they would have probably been okay, but they've looked, to me, they look like a decent enough young side, um, with a little bit of experience in there, obviously, but they seem to be coming together slightly, and they're kind of, they're, you know, out of trouble as such at yeah. the minute, maybe down to other teams being pretty awful, yeah. Um, but they've been okay. I think Dinny Corkin's got eight goals this season, and if he was to get eight or nine more, they'd, they'd okay. probably be yeah. safe at that point because probably maybe Pat twenty goals. Probably. Yeah, maybe yeah, Pat's aside. There's not another team down in that bottom six really who have Somebody really a natural goal scorer yeah. and a proven goal scorer in the um, top division. But we'll move on to a team who a lot of hype um, in the off season when they signed Paddy McCourt. And he's not really done a lot since. Um, and that's Finn Harps. Obviously, the whole Ollie Horgan being manager up there as well um, kind of brings a little bit more bravado to it because yeah. he's such a character. Yeah. I think, like, going into the season, um, <coughs> looking at Harps, quite impressed. Obviously, you've spoke about Paddy McCourt there. But um, Danny Morrissey obviously went up from Cork as well, yeah. and he'd shown bags of potential down there. And I know injuries had kind of um, disrupted his a couple of seasons from down there, but I expected a lot more from him going up there. Mm. Um, now, Kieran O'Connor's done well, he's chipped in with five goals from 18, but Morris is only starting to hit for him, and I think if, if him and O'Connor can, can chip in with a couple of more goals in, in the second half of the season, I think they'll be okay. Like I'm sure Harps would be ha more than happy to, to finish where they are now, but it is really tight down there. Yeah, um, and I think the a big loss, and he's gone now um, after the final game of the first half of the season, is Michael Funston. And he's left the club now. He's I don't know where he's gone off to, but he's left. Um, I'm sure if he's left after, and now he's left, he's probably doing uh, family commitments. He's probably dropping down to play at lower level or whatever. Yeah, I would guess so. But how much of a loss is he going to be for Harps? Because obviously he's been kind of one of their main creative forces in midfield for probably the last five to ten years, really. Yeah, since huge. he's come into the side. Yeah, now he like when they got up a couple of uh, last year, whatever the end. Of, Sorry, not last year, the year before. Yeah. He, like, he was, he was unsurmountable. I remember, obviously, being with UCD at the time and him being involved and like, really heavily involved in both sides. Like, he was really good creative going forward. But, yeah. he, like every other Finn Harps player, was well able to break the ball up in the middle of the pitch as well. Yeah. Um, the amount of goals they've conceded this year, though. Yeah, I know. It's kind of ridiculous of, what, 20, what, 20 goals scored and 32 conceded. It's, it's That's, not what you'd associate with Harps. No, it's not. It's Harps are a team who, when they came into the Premier Division, um, looked really, really promising. And looked a team who are going to be really solid at the back and would give you a little bit going Don't. forward, but would be more so set on a good defensive base. But we've can the courts probably changed that a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe he's given them a little bit more go forward. And I think Kieran O'Connor's actually given them a lot more as well because he's to me he's a really promising striker. I would have probably had him over his brother, um, over Michael coming to Rovers. So I think the, I think Harps will probably just about scrape by yeah, and maybe yeah. stay up I think there's teams obviously they have conceded a lot of goals but they're from obviously what we've said they're a team who could very easily fix that Yeah, and I'd, if they do I think they're going to be fine yeah I don't look I don't see that going on notice as well I think 
well, whatever it is now, two weeks off, I'm sure Ali Horgan will be pulling his hair out, watching videos back, trying to figure out why this is yeah. happening. And I think the whatever the Monday, Wednesday they are back training before the first game back, I think they'll, they'll be really working hard on that. I think we'll probably see a change in Hepps in the second half of the season. Yeah, you might see a change at centre half or a change in front of the back four or something, just yeah. something different to kind of sure it up where he's had a couple of weeks. Yeah. As you say, to go away, look at look at games back and see what they're doing wrong. He's quite... He's quite a wily old manager. He's got a good head about him for football and especially defensive football. So, if I was a Harps fan, I'd be quite positive about the second half of the season with Horgan in charge. I think he's, I think he probably has got enough about him as a character and as a tactical manager to kind of keep them safe. Um, a team who, obviously, have a wily old manager, but don't really seem to have a lot of quality, and especially in front of goal, and that's draw the United. Who are the next team we're going to speak about? Adam Wickstead is their top yeah. scorer with three goals this season, and they're another team kind of similar enough to Bows who had a decent start to the season and then just really tailed off and didn't win for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, and they really don't look like they've kicked on that much since the first half of the season. Yeah, I think there's a couple of reasons why Drada began to struggle and I think one was Killian Brennan Killian Brennan breaking his collarbone yeah. and he was out for whatever six to eight weeks because of that and the other one was the departure of Gareth McCaffrey for whatever reason and I think that's why their top scorer has three goals um, yeah exactly um, I think McCaffrey can't be understated how much of a loss he's been um, for the team I've just rain outside lads that's why he's looking <laughs> over there constantly he's terrified um, but McCaffrey kind of moving on from the club and everything like that that's a big loss because you you would know better than I would from watching first division last year that um, he was vital to them coming back into the Premier Division yeah absolutely and uh, certainly like securing playoffs near the end as well yeah um, we'll move on then to Sligo who are a big big club in the Premier Division and the first of two clubs in a row now we're going to speak about who you look at the table and if you looked at the Premier Division table five years ago these are the two teams battling it out for the league title yeah, and right. it's two teams who have just completely fallen off um, what have you made of Sligo so far this season obviously Dave Robertson was let go and everything like that earlier on in the season and they've looked I think a little bit more solid since then yeah look they look like they're starting to come together and not so much a new side but um, new, obviously a completely new foundation last year when Dave Robertson came in and stuff and a couple of new faces added to it again this year, but they just they just really seem to be struggling to kind of attain any sort of consistency. Maybe the new manager can do something about that, but they just don't. I don't know. They just don't strike me as a team that is going to put a run a run of games together. I mean, they haven't they haven't won away from home yet this season. Either. Yeah, which is a big big worry if you're a Sligo Rovers fan that a team who and the Sligo used to be notorious for coming down to Dublin and going to Shamrock Rovers or going to Bowers or going to Pats and picking up a yeah. big win under Paul Cook and then under Ian Barraclough after that they used to be a team who came down and made it really really difficult for you and played great football and were really good to watch and very entertained scored a lot of goals but the goals only got 19 this season I could see the 29 which <sighs> I know you know Mick Leahy from being at um, UCD with him but I know he's a proud man and a proud, st- you know, proud bastion of defending, and he's not going to be happy that they've conceded twenty nine goals a season being at the heart of it. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. But I think, I think with Sligo going forward, it is about consistency, as I said, and I think to to kind of keep that up, they need to they need to pick a back four and just stick with it. If they can yeah. do that, they have every chance. Yeah, like I, I really, really rate um Adaboy or Rowling uh, yeah. right back for them. I think he's probably their best player. Um, and obviously Kieran Sadlier has got six goals from as well this season. So with Sligo, do you, f- you said you don't think they're going to put a run of games together. Do you think they're going to be one of the teams who maybe slip out? And as an extension to it, is that maybe the best thing for Sligo at this point, to drop down to the first division and really just reboot the operation entirely? I personally wouldn't like to see them go down. I think no. that would really hurt the town and would really hurt the support base and the numbers they're going to get in the show against from week to week. I know they've dropped already in the last couple of years yeah. since Owen Harry's come in, really. Um, but with the new management and stuff, it's, it, look, it's it's a new start, it's a new slide for a lot of players. And Who knows, maybe that will kind of reignite a bit of a fire in them and they can go and put three or four wins together. But from what I've seen and read so far this season, it, it doesn't look likely. Yeah, and obviously, you know, with Sligo and new manager coming in from Linfield, do you feel that if they are going to strengthen the team, it's going to come from players from the north and maybe come from a couple of the lads from Linfield? Obviously, the Northern Irish season is finished now, so all those contracts are up and everything like that. Do you think it's going to come 
from there or will he maybe try and strengthen from their under 19s and under 17s or will it be from other players around the league world? I think personally I think your first option is right I think I'll probably go back to the Irish league yeah. and have a look at players like that that are a bit I wouldn't say tougher but <clears throat> a little bit more stronger and a little bit, bit kind of me- better stronger mentality about them yeah. that might be able to dig Sligo out as hell yeah exactly and you kind of have with um, with the new man charge and everything like that um, that Linfield are a team who are used to winning and if he brings a couple of players from Linfield down with them kind of maybe some of the leadership players from there they're going to be just they're going to be just fine because you're going to bring leaders into a team that, to me, looks like they lack leaders. Yeah, certainly for young lads. Yeah. Not not their fault, not the club's fault, but hopefully the new manager can do can do something about that and I think bringing lads down from Linfield will, will really help 